Thank you, Alex. Uh, can you all hear me? Those in the back, is this okay? Can you speak up a little bit? Yeah, okay. Uh, and now, can everybody hear me in the back? Is it okay? Okay, so I won't use the microphone. Okay, uh, welcome to today's talk. I'm Marko Turkovic. Uh, I work uh, as a developer in IGEA uh, from Croatia. It's part of IN2 Group. Uh, I won't bother you too much with, with the numbers, <coughs> but we are the, the largest software development company in Croatia. We have uh, offices in across the e Eastern and South Europe. And uh, maybe to, to say that TIGA is a, is a competence center for GIS. So we do a GIS development. Uh, today's, today's presentation and a solution is part of a Kosovo Cadastral Agency uh, spa uh, spatial data infra infra infrastructure that we have implemented recently. It is an uh, ongoing project, so we have about two or two or three months of uh, development left. It is a it is an in integrated web GIS solution for spatial data definition and maintenance, and it consists of several functional software modules that were separate projects: uh, GeoPortal, Cadastre, and Land Information System, and ad Address Registry for address data data maintenance and definition. Uh, one of the specialities of this project was uh, that we were forced forced to use Microsoft software for for uh, database management system and for operational system uh, because of uh, contract uh, of Republic of Kosovo and Microsoft. So we couldn't choose that. Of course, if we could, we would go with PostGIS, but that was that was <laughs> not not in the question. And uh, the other thing that uh, that modules that would be developed in this project would would uh, facilitate uh, the the next uh, so big software projects that uh, we are we are part of. So this this diagram uh, shows the component architecture of the whole system. So uh, from the user's persp perspective, we have a geo portal as a data dissemination point. It uh, you will recognize couple of <laughs> those those uh, logos there we we use that all so uh, this is the for this down down there is a uh, is internal system it's an uh, internet application for uh, uh, kca users where they de uh, where they define and uh, and maintain the the data this this module uh, deals with address registered data and this module uh, deals with uh, cadastro data, so this is the this is the central part of the of the whole whole system. Uh, it uh, it is uh, it uh, it offers uh, viewing and editing capabilities for for the data. So that's the that's the point of the system that consumed more most of our development time. Uh, th this is a short overview of uh, of a KCLS graphical component. Uh, we call it KG. Of <laughs> course, uh, it's uh, it's integrated solution for definition and maintenance of KCA's data sets, uh, sp sp uh, spatial data sets, uh, both address register and and cadastral, and uh, it's a basis for of, for development of uh, other modules that would work with uh, other KCA information system. Uh, of course, we we use the geo portal to to disseminate uh, the data toward uh, the public. Uh, its architecture is a uh, classic, classical three-tier architecture. On a database level, we have a SQL Server 2008. On the middle uh, middle tier, we have a Geo Server with Geo Web Cache and a .NET MVC3 business application. Uh, client side is uh, developed in Open Layers uh, Geo and XJS standard solution, and the components, of course, uh, based to SOA principles, communicate via services. WMS and WFS and, and JSON. Okay, a uh, couple of functions that uh, that our KG application offers. It's of course the, the main component is a viewer editor. It's a it's a main main point of uh, for for the, the spatial data viewing and editing. Then the feature class tool that ena en enables us to define other 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 feature classes and import data into our system later. Uh, it, 
it rests on uh, GeoServer REST's API for, for publishing new feature classes on GeoServer one. once they are collected. Then we have import tool that uh, we use for importing the data into our system. Currently we support GML shape, uh, DWG, interlist and GOT for raster data. And there, then there is styling tool which we use to, to style dynamically style our, our geometries on a, on a client side. It's client side. This is a short uh, GeoPortal overview. Of course, as I said before, this is a central public oriented software for dissemination of spatial data sets. And uh, you can see the user interface here on this, on this picture. This is the architecture of GeoPortal. It's very similar to KG application, except uh, you will notice we have Liferay, Liferay Portal Enterprise here that, that wraps client side functionality and access proxy on middle layer for proxying WFS and JSON requests to, to business application. Uh, GeoPortal enables us to, to view uh, spatial and uh, related alphanumeric data. It offers search, search and discovery services, ordering and download of data sets and pro products, and upload of data, data sets by data providers, and enables uh, the users to give feedback on data quality, so that, that can be checked. Uh, this is the URL for GeoPortal, so check it out <laughs> if you want to. So the next part of the presentation is about challenges that we have met during the development process. I have listed uh, 308 challenges, so we'll go one by one until the end, so I better hurry. Okay. Uh, the first uh, challenge that we knew it will be a big problem. This is a very bad joke, so it's okay if you're not laughing. It's called bad joke kill. So uh, we had to make a tool for curve digitization. So what we did, we implemented quadratic cur curve handler, so that's open layers development, right? Uh, based on quadratic Bezier curve parametric equation. So uh, we, in the end, approximated with line geometry, and this is how it works in, in practice. So. You digitize the first point, the last point, and then you use the apex to to reshape the the curve. This is the next uh, next uh, cool handler that we did. This is a line curve curve switcher handler that enables us to to seamlessly switch between uh, the arc digitization and uh, linear segment digitization. So it it ena ena enables fast digitizing. This is 4G. Okay, so uh, when it comes to polygons digitization, we also uh, implemented uh, several cool features. Uh, we basically what what we did, of course, was to extend open layers draw con draw feature control. Uh, we use JSTS on a client side for geometry validity and uh, and topology checks and all operations. So. First, uh, first tool that I will show you is a polygon splitting tool. The second, I remove polygon area, and then adjacent polygon digitization. So this is uh, this is a demonstration of polygon splitting tool. It's uh, done uh, client side, so it uses uh, JSTS uh, for for splitting the polygon, and we can see here the the multiple the one multi polygon has appeared in the, in this in this configuration. It supports polygons with holes, so it's, it's quite cool, and it's done client side. Uh, this is a tool that we can use to draw multi polygons on a client side with open layers. So we just we just add add geometry uh, while tool is active, and it will it will add to to existing geometry. We can also subtract the geometry from uh, from a polygon and get a cool looking robot. This is a this is a very cool feature. It uh, it's uh, inspired on a GIS, a GIS, uh, uh, desktop GIS uh, software, uh, and uh, we have what we have here is a first polygon, and then we digitize a line around it, and it just finishes a polygon automatically to close the the minimal surface with the, with the with the set with the first polygon. You get the idea. Uh, these are CAD-like tools for perpendicular and parallel construction. Uh, what they do first is they segment the line uh, from point to point. 
so that uh, perpendicular and parallel construction would even make sense. Then when we select select the the segment that we want, they just they, they just programmatically uh, draw a parallel and perpendicular line, and then you can reshape it by <laughs> by dragging. Uh, this is the this is the nice uh, nice example of a uh, tool that uh, guides the user to how to use the application. It has five steps. So basically, what we want to do is to digitize uh, digi digitize a point that lies on a on a intersection of a of a circle and a line. So what the user do does first is digitizes start point of the line. Uh, end point of the line, uh, cer uh, center of the circle enters radius, and then selects the appropriate point that he wants to use. Uh, this is a, this is this is a very cool feature. Uh, it's a, it's topology per preserving modify feature. It's basically extended uh, modify feature from open layers, and uh, what it does is uh, when we when we drag when we drag a point that has. Uh, uh, that uh, coincides with with other points. The that that point goes with it as well. So the topology of our section is is preserved. It also has a validity check. We don't uh, we don't allow self intersecting polygons, and it has a rollback. So when we when we do an error on geometry, it just fixes itself to the to the last uh, valid state. It, as you can see. I think it it uh, it resides on a, a JSTS for for all the all the operations. It could use some modifications like uh, insert of tool that would insert uh, vertex on all coincident, coincident geometries and delete tool, but that's in that's a work in progress. Okay, uh, basically uh, our application is a full featured web editing application. And uh, we knew we will ha have uh, performance issues when we when we decided to use open layers because uh, the large number of features will always overburden the the browser. It has limit uh, it has uh, limited capabilities, limited memory. So we we had to think of something that would that would ease this up. So what we did was to extend uh, open layer strategy bounding box. Uh, so that uh, implements uh, seamless switching between vector and WMS layers when uh, based on a zoom level. So uh, on a <coughs> on a large scales uh, you have vector features, and on a small scales when you zoom out you have WMS features. So uh, that that means that you can draw on the on the full extent, but you can select anything. So if you if you want to select features, you zoom in. I don't know to one to five thousand or whatever you want you, you whatever you set it and then you can select uh, edit data and uh, data that is edited and selected that doesn't get unloaded when you zoom out again so it's a uh, it's pretty cool cool feature and the bounding box does everything uh, keeps keeps track of the WMS layer so you don't have to worry about anything Of course, this is uh, this uh, active layer concept is inspired by edit session on uh, desk on desktop GIS tools, and what we did was uh, implemented uh, one set of controls that can work on all layers, so we don't have to duplicate controls. Uh, what was missing in open la op open layers to that to work out of the box was that uh, some some controls don't don't have uh, implemented set layer. So we we added set layer method for for every control that we use, and then when <coughs> user activates uh, edit session for some layer, all all controls get rewired to that layer, so they can work on it. One of the requirements of project was to to enable user to dynamically style vector and VMS layers, so to to be able to. To change the the styling styling information about everything. So for this, we we were we use the Geo Solutions style editor component, uh, and uh, what we do is when a user edits the SLD through the graphical interface, we create vector styles from that SLD, dynamically reload the icons for each uh, layer node in the layer tree, and uh, besides that, we have also overridden 
uh, open layers renderer and open layers format SLD classes uh, to to add the support for label rotation with which we needed as well. Uh, uh, multi language support was a big issue for us. We we implemented in on several layers in the application. On client side, we have uh, we have uh, I eighteen n language files for for JavaScript, uh, and then in the database we have uh, multiple multiple attributes uh, for for each for each language. We have an attribute in a, in the database, but uh, how to style geometries? Uh, we we uh, asked the Geo Solutions to develop a new function for for that uh, for that cause. It uses a uh, environment uh, variable su and su substitution, and it's called property. And uh, you can you can send in a request uh, uh, the name of the attribute that you want to use for for geometry styling. That's pretty cool. Um, it, it it's a very serious and uh, uh, official system so of course uh, we had uh, a lot of uh, demands on spatial data quality control uh, we have a set of business rules and data naming convention that we have to follow and of course uh, we check uh, geometry validity uh, on the client side not to that's that w that uh, performance is okay so it's good but for several others uh, complicated uh, topology and uh, especially layer to layer topology checks and uh, hierarchical checks that uh, form hierarchy we we use the database uh, database special special data quality control via procedures and and such on the middle tier we use uh, jts port nts for several other checks so we could say we have a three way uh, quality <coughs> control on our, our system uh, so, because uh, if you remember the, the graph from before, uh, the, all those uh, systems are inter interconnected, and so as the GeoPortal disseminates the data for uh, for internal applications, we don't want to overburden our internal infrastructure by with uh, with public access. So uh, what we did was uh, to replicate the database and GeoServer catalog from one system to another. For that, we use use the Microsoft SQL Server uh, integration services and the Geo, GeoServer REST API for reconfiguration of data stores when we move them from one storage to, to another. I think this, yeah, this is the last one. Uh, so bear with me. Uh, of course, uh, as I mentioned uh, in the start, uh, we had to use Microsoft software for uh, for operating system and uh, for uh, DBMS, and also we use uh, application server for Microsoft IS7 and the uh, .NET Framework 4 and .NET MVC 3 for our business application, uh, and for live li uh, for uh, Geo Portal we use a uh, Life Ray Life Ray Portal pl at enterprise pl platform. And uh, it wraps our our client side fu functions in in portlets. So that was one of the. Okay, so we have uh, plans for improvement of that system. Uh, the the lab development of the cadaster component is still in progress. So it's an ongoing project. I don't know about a couple of months more, and it will be over. Then we thought it would be cool to to offer some kind of a data preview when importing our data but that is that still ne needs to some thinking uh, more flexible language and security would be would be nice also for for application uh, which security ex especially and then uh, the native support for curve geometries from from geo server and jts and geo tools and open layers that that would uh, that would probably need uh, tremendous amount uh, of time and, <coughs> and effort from the community to be implemented, but I w I'm, I'm sure it will be implemented one day. So of course uh, it is our duty and we would we, it would be nice uh, that we try to contribute more to open source community. So in the end of the project we'll, we'll contact some of the developers from OpenLayers and see if there is any, any interest in, in modules that we have developed for for this application so uh, in the end to wrap things up 
we have learned that uh, Phosphor G is uh, mature enough and flexible enough to to implement uh, even very complex uh, SDI implementations and bu business applications. So, of course, uh, the the big plus is uh, a great community, very large community that uh, that helped us in every way of, of the that it could in the process of development. The software is very versatile, flexible, scalable, <laughs> all, all, the, all the nice things. And uh, even if we want to, we can easily integrate it with proprietary software as we had to do. Uh, of course, we can only conclude that it was the, the, right, the right choice for, for this particular project and implementation. OK, so that's, that's it for me. I think, yeah, we have enough time. Thank you. So, so feel free to, to ask something, yes. Sir? We've got five minutes for questions, so, yeah. Hi, I'm Mark. Um, uh, very good talk, mostly. Um, Thank you. And uh, I'm a core developer of 